Capture the flag is the worst game mode in Team Fortress 2. Now that I've got your attention, let's roll that classic Uncle Dane intro. Suspension going up. I guess that'll do. Where do I even start with this video? I mean, this is gonna be kind of like telling the kids that Santa is actually just their stepdad and a fake beard. I know that there are people who play TF2 and watch my videos who like playing Capture the Flag, and honestly, that's completely fine. Everyone likes bad things. I like bad things. I like playing Dust Bowl. That's one of the worst maps in the game, and I love playing Dust Bowl. I love the movie Sucker Punch, and that film is trash. What happened to you, Zack Snyder? What happened? Basically, when you have a list of game modes, there's always going to be a worst option, and Capture the Flag is that option. Before you go message me like, oh, what about special delivery? I'm talking about game modes that Valve doesn't consider to be alternative on their map selection screen. CTF is bad for a few reasons, the simplest one being that it's a bad learning environment for players who are new to Team Fortress 2 and the concepts of individual classes. Let's take the Sniper, for example. He's a pretty straightforward class, just stand somewhere far away and shoot people in the head, but where do you see the Sniper standing? standing on a payload map like Badwater. You see him standing here, 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 here. That's because payload maps encourage the sniper to switch things up and rewards him for doing so. What about on an attack defend map like Steel? You see the sniper standing here, 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 here. King of the Hill? Eh, meh, 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 meh. What about on two fort? Here, and sometimes down here. Actually, no, that's a bad place to stand. Stand here. Capture the flag maps encourage the most linear class in the game to be even more linear. But I'm not just talking about simple classes. What about the more complex classes like Engineer? On any given map, you'll see Engineer building in all sorts of places. The class just really opens up a lot of player creativity and options. Yeah, when you're playing CTFNG, you always gotta defend that intelligence. Better build in the intel room like always. This game is really fun! It's not a coincidence that new players who play as Sniper and Engineer always look the derpiest, because most of the time you see them playing on a map with an objective that punishes them for staying in one place. They just straight up get killed every time, and they don't know why. It's because they're conditioned by CTF maps to turtle and repeatedly do the same thing every time, so they don't learn that you can't just stand in one place the whole game. You'll die if you do that on any other map running any other game mode. Where is he going? Yeah, I knew that was like, he has one. always one prime directive and that's <laughs> to upgrade his shit. Capture the flag, along with maybe King of the Hill, are pretty familiar concepts to the average gamer, so that's probably why a lot of new players flock to these maps early on. And it's a shame, because TF2 as a game is much more complex than this. It's like an infant learning how to walk and talk, you know, those are the most impressionable years of his life. If you teach that baby to eat food with his knees, he's gonna have a pretty difficult college life, you know what I'm saying? Ah. Another big reason why Capture the Flag isn't a good game mode for TF2 2 is because there's no time limit. Now, I'm of the opinion that you need a time limit in this game because there's defense classes, offense classes, generalist classes, and they all get in the same room and fight and you're, you're gonna have a few stalemates. And while both teams are sitting on the opposite sides of a choke point and then they realize there's no time limit. I could just stand here all day. I don't have to make a move. You make a move. You go. No, you go. No, you. That's just not fun anymore. And this is simultaneously why 5CP is a flawed game mode as well. The time limit after a point is capped is set to just under 10 minutes. There's no urgency in that. That's just asking people to stand around for 10 minutes waiting for someone to fuck up and die so they can safely push through the choke point. And this brings me to a separate but related point about 5CP and other competitive game modes. In the Scream Fortress update, Valve removed two 5CP maps, Badlands and Granary, and added two non-5CP maps, Badwater and Turbine, a payload and a CTF map respectively. Now, consider the possibility that 5CP, while it is the most played game mode in our current competitive community, might not be the best competitive game mode in the TF team's eyes. And I can kind of see where they might be coming from if this is the case, because TF2, believe it or not, has nine classes, and Valve would understandably want to show that off to the competitive gaming scene, but 5CP as a game mode encourages the generalist classes like Scout and Soldier to be run 99% of the time. And it makes sense to run generalist classes on 5CP maps because your team may need to attack or defend at any given time. If you're running a heavy, it's going to be easier to defend, but more difficult to attack if you're running a pyre 
Pyro, your team might be more effective in choke points, but less effective in open areas like on mid. If you're running high mobility, high damaging classes like Soldier, Scout, and Demo Man, you're going to be able to switch between attacking and defending instantly. So that's why the 6v6 meta has settled where it has, because of the 5 CP game mode encouraging those classes to be run almost full time. In other game modes, you will actually see teams be able to switch up their class lineup depending on what the objective is or how much time is left on the clock. For instance, on Payload, it would be more common to see defensive classes like Heavy, Engineer, Sniper run the entire round on Red while the attacking team will be running classes to counter that, like Spy, Demo Man, etc. It just encourages more variety and more counterplay, and I think that while Swiftwater is a bad choice for competitive 6v6 because of how goddamn long the map is, I've actually been having a lot of fun playing Bad Water and Competitive, and I'd honestly like to see more reasonable payload maps be added to the map rotation over time, such as Upward or Borneo. The only thing that I could see being done about payload in 6v6 is maybe make it so that the cart doesn't need to be throttled the entire time in order to push it. Like, what if it still pushes itself for a short time after it's been touched? That might make the cart bitch scout a little bit more excited to play the game. But Turbine, ooh, why did they have to add Turbine? I thought we already did this in the closed beta valve. Turbine, and every other CTF map for that matter, just isn't a good game mode for competitive TF2. I mean, it's barely even a good game mode for pubs. Here's why. The game always plays out like this. Both teams roll out to the middle area for a mid-fight that isn't really a mid-fight kind of DM fest kind of thing, and whoever wins that gets to walk to the enemy team's intel room and start trying to cap it. At this point, the defending team now starts to defend, and the attacking team starts to attack, and they fall into their respective positions waiting for uber charge or for someone to die. Classic TF2. But while all this is happening, the defending team can send a spy or a scout to the other team's intel room to try and sneak the cap. But what this ends up doing is forcing the entire attacking team to drop what they're doing and go kill the guy trying to take their intel. The reason why they all have to do this is because they're forced to defend that intelligence for at least 60 seconds because the briefcase is on a timed reset. A full minute of trying to keep someone from touching the intel and resetting the timer. People spawn faster than 60 seconds. There's always going to be people throwing themselves at it. Now this game has turned into both teams defending their intel and there's no round timer. And we're playing to three captures. Anytime either team tries to coordinate an assault on the intel room to smoothly pull off a cap, it can be easily disrupted by one player taking the other intel and forcing both teams to go on the defensive simultaneously. And there's no round timer. And we're playing to three captures. Why must it be this way? Actually, it doesn't have to be this way, Valve. Just like my suggestion to make the payload card have a touch-and-go pushing mechanic in 6v6, they can easily change the 6v6 CTF mechanics to be less of a headache. I personally like the option of making the flag return on touch, which means the flag gets reset whenever somebody from that team touches the briefcase. This would solve the problem of having to pull your entire team out of the attacking position to go stop some random spy from capping, because now you can just go send a scout to go take care of it, since he can both kill the spy and reset the intel immediately, which will make back capping the intel a distraction play at best and won't end up disrupting the flow of the game. In the end, the changes made to the competitive map pool have become a bit of a meme at this point, but I believe that the main idea behind Valve throwing these changes at us is so that we can look at them and respond with, here's what you're trying to do, and here's why it won't work that well, and here's what I think would be an effective way to fix that. Let's cut out this whole, I reject this, bring out the pitchforks mentality, and actually try and compromise because things are going to change. And we might think that they're weird at first, but it doesn't mean that we can't just figure out the best in-between that makes everyone satisfied. So just as a summary of why your favorite game mode is bad here, it encourages bad positioning for certain classes, there's no time limit which causes stalemates, and the flag takes a long time to reset, which causes even staler mates. Uh, so. Thanks for watching, talking news, and everybody.